Hello and welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. So let's head over to the Firebase console and that's console.firebase.google.com and in the console we can create a new project. When we click create a project it'll ask for the project name. I'm just going to call this time tracker app and then we have to accept the Firebase terms and if you haven't read them you should click the link and go ahead and read through the terms. And then we can press continue. And now on step two, it's going to ask us about Google Analytics. And we are going to use Google Analytics, so let's just enable Google Analytics for this project and click continue. And then finally, it's going to want us to configure Google Analytics. So we should cho choose or create a Google Analytics account. And if you don't have one, it's pretty simple to set up. But if you do have one, you can just choose that account. And then you'll have an option to automatically create a new property in this account, or you can use an existing property I'm going to leave it as automatically create a new property and then I will click create project. Once your project is done setting up, you'll see this page here that lets you know your project is ready and you can click continue. And that'll bring us to our project overview. And in our project overview, this is where we can manage the project by adding apps, whether it be iOS or Android, as well as a web app. Uh, we could also go into the develop tab and use authentication, database storage, etc. So let's get started by adding an app. So let's add an Android app. And this is going to want the package name for the Android app. So we can head over to our project and go to the Android properties. Under Android application, you'll see that we have a package name. And so if yours is the default com.company name or something like that, go ahead and change it. So I'm going to change mine to com.let's create series. I'll leave it time tracker tutorial and I'll copy that package name. And then we can click OK because we don't need that anymore. We can head back to Firebase and we can add our package name. An app nickname is just that, it's optional, and this is the way it appears just for you. Eventually we'll want to add a signing certificate SHA-1, but we're going to wait on that, and then we can click register app. The next step is to download the config file, so let's go ahead and download googleservices.json. Once you have that downloaded, you can click next because we're going to import it into our app, so click next. And now it gives you some instructions for Android Studio, which we're not going to use. So let's head over to our project. And we need to bring in that Google Services. Before we do that, let's add Firebase. So let's right-click our Android project and click Manage NuGet Packages. And then we can search for Xamarin.Firebase. And we're looking for Xamarin.Firebase.Analytics, which is a Xamarin.Android binding so we can check that and let's decrease the version down to 60.1142.1 and we'll click add package and then the license acceptance window will be presented with all of the dependencies and their licenses and if you haven't seen these licenses yet feel free to click them and read through them and once you've done that go ahead and click accept and anytime you add anything with firebase to your project in xamarin you should always rebuild after the packages are added because a lot of the times we'll come into conflicts with the packages and just have a bunch of issues with Xamarin. So let's go ahead and rebuild Android. With a successful build, we can right click on the Android project and we can add an existing file. And wherever you downloaded Google services.json, head there and add that file. And now I have Google services.json at the root level in the Android project. And we need to set its build action. So right click build action and we want to find Google service.json. With those steps in place, we can head back to the console and we can click next. And now it wants us to run our app to verify installation. This step doesn't always work, but if it doesn't right now, we can check in, in real-time analytics and see if it's working. So let's head over to our project and run our app. And now with our app successfully running, let's head back over to Firebase console. Sometimes this could spin and keep checking for a long time and sometimes it'll just never register. So we could just skip this step for now. And now we'll head over to analytics and go to dashboard and see if we have any real-time users. And we should see that we have a user now. And if you don't, go ahead and refresh the page. And now we can see that our analytics are linked up to Firebase Analytics. Now let's head over to develop and click authentication. And we're going to enable Firebase authentication. So we can set up a sign-in method. And we'll start with just an email and password. So we can click this and press enable and then we will save. And now we have email password sign-in provider. And now we can add a test user and give it just some sample email like test at test123.com and then provide some kind of simple password, something easy that you can remember. With Firebase authentication set up, we can add the NuGet packages for Android. So let's just head over to manage NuGet packages and type in Firebase auth. 
and then we can get the Xamarin Android bindings for Google Play services, click Add Package. And again, every time we add some Firebase packages, we should rebuild the project to make sure there's no issues. And with no issues on our build, we can go ahead and try to run. We can see that our app started up, so no problems there with the Firebase auth package. Let's go ahead and stop our app, and then let's make a folder in the Android project, and we can call this Folder Services. And basically what we're going to do is create an account service in the Android project and use dependency service to move it, push it up to the shared project. So we have this services folder in the Android project. Let's right click and add a new class. And this will be account service. Our account service will implement I account service. And then we can use a quick fix to Im import the using. And then we'll get an error that we have to implement the interface. And now we need to provide a login async and a get current pay rate async. Get current pay rate async, we can still return some sample data because we're not into Firestore yet. So let's just return task dot from result and we can just make it 10 again. But on login async, we're going to want to use Firebase authentication. So let's go ahead and delete this throw new not implemented exception and let's start working on our Firebase authentication. So in our login method, we're going to want to return a task uh, with a result type of bool. So let's make a task completion source. So var tcs equals new task completion source, and this will be of type bool. And then this will give the shared project something to await. Now we're gonna make a call to the Firebase auth instance. So we can say Firebase auth dot instance, and we can import the using. And then we can say sign in with email and password async, and we're gonna pass in username and password. We'll want to continue with, and this will be a Lambda expression with a task parameter. And then we will use an action, so on auth completed. And this will take in the task that we received as well as the TCS. And then we need to use a quick fix to create that action. And now in here, once we set a result to that TCS, then the login async method will return. But before we do that, we can take a look at the task and get its result and declare a author authenticated user from there. And if there's something wrong with the task, then we can just report that as well. Before we go any further in this action, let's get rid of the error and login async. And so basically we'll just return tcs.task, which will allow anybody calling login async to await this method and receive some kind of Boolean response. So now in onauth completed, we wanna check our task and make sure it's not canceled or faulted. So let's just say if task dot is canceled or task dot is faulted. So that means either it was canceled or something went wrong. So we can just say something went wrong. Then we can set the result on TCS. So set result and we'll just set false and then we'll return. Otherwise, so if we make it pass there, then we have a successful task. With a successful task, we can just set result. So TCS dot set result true. And this can just report back to our shared project and let us know if the login attempt was successful or if it failed. Before we can use this, we need to register this to dependency service. So let's head up above the namespace declaration and let's say assembly dependency, and this will be using Xamarin forms. And we'll just say type of account service, and then we'll import the using for the droid namespace, and this will register it to dependency service. And then we need to head over to page model locator. So in page models base page model locator. So we'll find the line that has the account service registration and the mock account service. And we'll just remove the mock account service registration. And in the parentheses, we will use dependency service dot get, and we'll use I account service. And that'll drop down to the platform. It'll pull up the service that we're registering for Android. For iOS, we haven't created that service yet. So we'll get to that next, but let's make sure this works. So let's set a breakpoint in our account service. We'll set a breakpoint on the check if it's canceled or faulted, and then we can kind of view what the result is and it should be an authenticated user. So let's go ahead and press run now. So now if we try to log in with some, just the same garbage we've been trying to log in with and press run, we should get a faulted task and we can check task status faulted. And if we check the reason why we can view the exception and we can see that the email address is badly formatted. So we can just continue. And then we can try to log in again with something with an at sign to make it look like an email. So test.com, try it again and we should get another error. And now we have it faulted again and we can check why. And it will let us know that there's no user record corresponding to this identifier. So we could see that we are connected to our Firebase authentication. And so now we should try to log in with our registered user that we created, that test user. 
So let's give this another try. So I'll use the fake user that I created in Firebase Authentication, and then I'll click Login, and we can see that our task status is ran to completion, and if we go ahead and check, there is no exception, so we should get back a true. So if we continue, our app now brings us to the time clock page. I think that's a good stopping point for today's video. If you like the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. Thank you for watching the Xamarin Forms tutorial. I'm Patrick, and this is the Let's Create series.